Teens Lead Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Singleton. And as a child of the 80s, I'd love to say queens rule, but they don't. Queens lead. Being a queen means you are worthy to be a leader of people. The guests on our show do exactly that. They are leading the way in their businesses, families, and communities. And they're taking their rightful place in the spotlight, leading and inspiring the developing queens in all of us. Welcome to the Queen's Lead Podcast. Welcome everyone to another episode of the Queen's Lead Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Singleton, and we are blessed today to have Shanna Pearson with us, owner of 35 Coaching. She is a wife and mom, a business owner, and has a very unique story. So welcome, Shanna. Thank you so much for having me, Amy. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for being here. So tell our guests who Shanna is. Oh man. Okay. Well, the quick version is, uh, like you said, um, my name is Shanna Pearson. I'm the owner and founder of 35 Coaching. Um, I am a mindset coach for student athletes. So I work with ages 12 to 22. Uh, we really focus on uh, time management, goal setting, reframing, limiting beliefs. Um, it's a passion of mine because I was a former student uh, athlete. I worked or I played basketball um, from the time I was 10 all the way through college. I played at the University of Arkansas for four years. Um, yeah, wife, mama of two little girls. Um, I was a tomboy growing up. So uh, the good Lord has such a merciless sense of humor. He gave me, <laughs> two, he gave me two of the sassiest, pr- like prissiest high maintenance girls ever. And I absolutely love it. So <laughs> I love it. God's like, all right, we're going to sprinkle a little bit of bows into this Mm -hmm, life. (laughs) mm -hmm. Like you don't have enough glitter and enough unicorns. So here you go. Yeah. And there you go. Yeah. And and now you're such a way more well-rounded person for it. Right. (laughs) Exactly. That's how I like to look at it. Yes. It just, yeah, it gives me more roundness and depth. So it works. (laughs) Yeah. It would have been way too easy with boys that were passionate about basketball. Right. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So now we get to try all the sports, right? So I like my default and my husband's default was basketball. So now we've done soccer and gymnastics, which I'm six one gymnastics was never, ever going to happen for me. So, um, yeah, we're just running through the gamut. So it's great. That's awesome. Yeah. And I know you came from oil and gas into coaching. Tell me about yes. that journey. What did that look like? And it happened during a very, uh, difficult time to step out on your own. I understand. Absolutely. Yeah. I have kind of a crazy story. So my, um, I, as I said, I worked in oil and gas for 15 years. I started at Chesapeake energy in Oklahoma city, um, as a marketing analyst and really kind of made my way. I was there for about seven or eight years and then moved over to continental where I became a scheduler. I became a trader, senior trader, supervisor. So I managed our entire trade book as well as a couple schedulers that we had. And then I moved over to Devon where I was um, in gas sales. So I was connecting Wells Pipeline, lot of the contract negotiation. Um, And then 2020 happened. And I don't, you know, it was such an interesting uh, year to begin with, but I remember if you follow commodities at all, in April of 2020, we were all stuck in quarantine and oil um, price of barrel pool her oil um, went down to negative $38 a barrel. So I was sitting right here where I am now at my makeshift desk. And I had my then two-year-old on my lap and my then, I think she was probably six, yelling for a snack, market closed. I'm like tensed up, freaking out, um, almost in tears. And I just had this like, like I call it my, my God moment, my aha moment where I just what happened is I felt like a ray of sunshine was coming through the window and it was like, go be a life coach. And um, so I literally got out of my chair and walked into uh, where my husband was set up and said, I'm going to be a coach. I want to be a life coach. And he was like, okay, dear, you have, you've had a rough day. So let's, <laughs> like, let's, let's get a glass of wine and maybe just unwind a little bit. And I was like, no, this is what I'm doing. I want to do it. Like it's something. And he and I had talked about it probably five or six years that I just felt this pull to, um, to do coaching. And I didn't know what it looked like just yet, but I knew that that's where I wanted to be. I wanted to make an impact and I wanted to serve. So that next week signed up for my coaching program that I went through. I hired a coach, uh, the day before I started my coaching program, I was diagnosed with colon cancer. And so I spent that first weekend of my training, like in tears, wondering if like I would even be here to coach. And so 
um, by the grace of God, got through training. In August of 2020, I had my surgery to um, remove the malignant tumor, which was kind of up under my ribs and about two and a half feet of my colon and continued training. <clears throat> and as I was in the um, hospital um, recovering from my colectomy, I got an email from my employer to let me know that um, when I come back from short-term disability, I would be let go. And if you're from Oklahoma, oil and gas industry, like that is common. It's a very volatile market. So I had my end game of being a coach, but I wasn't quite ready to let go of that cushy six figure salary. Um, so just kind of had to pivot and adjust. And so in October of 2020 is when I started 35 coaching. And as I kept going through my program, I just kept feeling this call to work with athletes, to work with young people. Um, I had struggled with those feelings of fear of failure, that pressure that we put on ourselves, um, that perfectionism, I struggled with that as an athlete, carried it into my corporate life with me. And there were times where it became a struggle. Like I really battled with, you know, what if I fail? And I'm sure most of us know we have that limiting belief or that um, thought pattern that, oh my gosh, if I fail and we'll go down the rabbit hole and you could come up with the, like the craziest things that would happen if you failed, right? And so um, I really am grateful for coaching, not only that I felt this pull to come to this, you know, to step into this arena, but the coaching tools and concepts, I started using them for myself. And that like was so fun. I mean, it just helped me break a lot of you know, limiting beliefs I had around, you know, stepping out and owning the business and working with athletes and working with young people that, um, I mean, I, I just, coaching is a passion. Like, I feel like everybody should have a coach and I just yes. love what I do. So now I get to work with, you know, these awesome athletes that ages, you know, 12 to 22 that are, you know, not only juggling, um, you know, their sport and they're competitive in that sport, but they're these tools and concepts that we work on help and, their social situations and their academic situations and um, having those tough conversations with parents and coaches and teammates. Um, we get to cover all of that stuff. And so, um, yeah, now owning this business and doing it for about a year and a half has just been, it's been the craziest ride, but it's been so much fun. <laughs> so much oh fun. my God. I mean, you said you had an interesting story, but yes. hello, seriously. Uh so like, talk about triumph from tragedy. I mean, mm -hmm. most people would just go, like you said, bury themselves in bed with a glass of wine. Yep. If the commodity we trade is negative. Right. <laughs> right. And then in the middle of it, I, I mean, that timing was so perfect. Like yes. there is no other, no other person to think than the universe. God, I know. I still, get it. <laughs> yeah, I still get goosebumps when I think about it. I'm like, yeah, it was such a, you know, challenging year. But when I look back on 2020, I think, God, oh, what a gift. Like, I, yeah. you know, I had, we had such a struggle with quarantine and the pandemic and not knowing. Um, but I also got time with my girls that like, I would never get again. And I had this, you know, crazy diagnosis. I'm already on the, you know, precipice of making this big life change. But then I have this diagnosis that really shifts things like right into perspective of like, okay, am I living on purpose? Am I doing what I'm supposed mm. to be doing for the time that I am here Am I using the gifts that I've been given? Um, and that was, you know, having to sort through some of that stuff and do some soul searching. It was challenging, but again, it was like, I'm here because of 2020. And so that is, that is a gift. Yeah, it is. Yes. Oh my yeah. God. I mean, like anyone else that gets a cancer diagnosis and then a letter, you know, from their employer gone, Oh, by the way, you're fired. Yeah. And that's usually <laughs> right. like, I can imagine you go, Oh, well, thank you. Cause I yeah. already had a plan. <laughs> right. Yeah. But again, you know, you have that fear of failure and you're like, Oh my gosh. So yeah. So I've had, I've been in the corporate arena for 15 years. This is what I know. And, you know, in our brains, it's a lot I talk about with my athletes, our brains are basically a computer and they're set up in a sequence. And when you break out a sequence, that's when all those limiting beliefs and those you know, thought patterns show up like, oh my gosh, we're going to fail. We're going to screw up. You need to get a job right now. And so I really had to take that leap of faith of, okay, we've had a few life changes happen in a couple of months. And so we're going to make another one. And so we're just going to have to step out in faith and do it. Absolutely. That's it. Lean in, yeah. not out. Right. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I love mm -hmm. it. Oh my gosh. Well, you mentioned that your husband was like, 
okay, honey. Like, but where is he? Tell me about, I know you're a wife and a mom. So tell me about the support of your family and what that's looked like through this. Yeah, that's been, um, that's been fun because I have always been kind of like a YOLO kind of person. Like you only live once. Let's just, you know, we'll figure it out, you know, when we, when we can. And my husband, he works for the federal government in a very like Um, particular type of uh, job where, you know, you have to follow regs, you have to follow certain guidelines. And so he's very much a rule follower and big planner. And so, um, so this, yeah, you're giggling, right? (laughs) I was the planner. Yeah, you're the planner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm the one like, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Like, and I tell, you know, I tell my friends or, you know, people, I'm like, I can plan planning is not an issue, but if there's like so many different variables in the air, I'm not going to plan for a year, two years, five years. I mean, I have my business plan or I have, you know, vacation plans. I can do those things. But as far as like down to every single detail, I'll leave that to him. Cause I'm, I'm going to be like, we'll figure it out. It's fine. We'll figure it out. So if there was definitely a, a challenge of, you know, from, you know, that financial perspective of like, yes, we're both bringing in considerable income and I'm about to change all of that. Um, I still had, you know, hopes to get back to where I was at and I'm very, you know, well on my way to being there. But at the time, you know, October, 2020, you're like, oh, okay. So you're going to get a severance package. And then how long is that going to last us? And um, I'm like, we'll figure it out. It's fine. We'll just figure it out. And of course my, my little girls, um, they're seven and four and, you know, they still just are like, well, whatever, whatever makes you happy. And so, um, you know, my daughter, even on my mother's day card that she made, it's the one thing I love was life coaching. And I was like, Oh, you're just so cute that, you know, what I do. And you're excited about what I do because, you know, with oil and gas, like my girls could really care less what I was doing every day. And I'm like, it's kind of a big deal. I'm kind of a big deal guys. And yeah, they don't care. They don't care at all, so. <laughs> Yeah. But even a seven-year-old can appreciate when she sees mama impacting lives, like yeah. for real, for real. Yeah. And she has seen a little bit of it because we, I've gotten to work with some athletes kind of locally and she has seen, um, the impact that, um, I've been blessed to, you know, to have on some of these kids. And so, um, and even, you know, with her, she's getting smart enough to know that I'm asking like life coaching questions to her, like, you know, which has been great as a parent, right. You know, cause I think we get so frustrated sometimes and, um, you know, but just to get on her level and just like, okay, let's have a talk about this. And she's like, are you asking me questions that you would ask your clients? I'm like, I am, but they're going to work for you too. I promise. So, (laughs) (laughs) so talk a little bit about your clients or maybe a favorite client. Tell me where someone was and what they look like now on the other side of, of hiring you. Oh my gosh. I love this. So I have one right now. We're almost done with our agreement. And when we started, um, she was, um, crazy, awesome soccer player. She was, uh, I think she's like 15. I think that sounds about right. Um, nervous, anxious was totally getting in her head whenever she would play, like to the point that you could like physically see it in her body where she was just almost kind of, um, almost frozen in spots, like where she, you know, really got so much in her head about how to compete, how to, you know, play against the other team. Um, she wasn't really having any social interaction. She was super nervous to talk to people at school because school is, you know, it's been so weird for the last two years for these kids. And, um, yeah. and so like the parent had said, like, she used to be very vibrant and bubbly and, you know, happy. And now she's kind of withdrawn and, um, you know, she you know, still loves soccer, but she's getting so, you know, having that fear of failure and perfectionism so much that now she wants to quit. And so, Um, so through our work together, um, she's now making plans with friends, like she's making the plans. She's having conversations with coaches about managing expectations and what that looks like for her as an underclassman. She started on varsity where that was not even a, like a thought at the beginning of the season. Um, people have commented on her, um, her play and her spirit to her parents. The coach has said something like she has, um, she's one of my favorites and she has really blossomed, like just using some of the, the tools that we work on. Um, and so I'm going to miss her. Like when it, I know we're going to be done here in a couple of months, but I'm like, oh, I just want to keep these little babies forever. So that's one for sure. 
That's awesome. I mean, so this is obviously not just about sports. It's about developing leadership skills and communication skills. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's things lacking. Absolutely. I think, you know, with us, you know, for me, all age, I'm 40 and, you know, growing up, I didn't have social media. I had pressures of like parents and coaches and my uh, friends or teammates, but I didn't have that immediate gratification that these kids have now. And with that immediate gratification also comes that immediate pressure of, oh, so-and-so is competing at a higher level or so-and-so just got to go to Florida for their turn, you know, for their sports tournament. Um, So there's this constant comparison, um, not only just with the kids, but even with the parents, the parents get competitive about it too. And so like, oh, well, we want to be on this competitive team, not this competitive team. And the kids feel that pressure. And so, especially with COVID in the last two years, they've had their sport, which they love, kind of taken away from them. And, um, you know, kind of, it's been, if they have, if they've gotten to play, they've had to play with a mask on or with no people in the stands, or they haven't been able to do their personal individual workouts the way they normally would. So there's this sense of urgency for these kids um, to be great, to be perfect. And, um, and I think, especially as moms, we struggle with that fear of perfectionism so much. Like we have got to be perfect all the time. We've got to be, um, you know, know all the things, have everybody's plans. And so that starts, I mean, I remember being a teenager and that started with me, like it had to be perfect or I would struggle. And I see that with athletes now, like they want to be perfect. They want to, you know, they don't want to fail. And so getting really clear about what that fear of failure looks like or what perfectionism looks like with them is the, one of the first things that we work on, um, and really kind of dismantling those fears around failure and perfectionism. Mm. So would you say that the majority of your clients are student like school participants, are they more on like competitive and league type travel teams, or is it a combination? It's a combination. Um, I actually, you know, my emphasis is with student athletes. So my sweet spot is really high school. I've worked with, um, and what I also love to do is work with college athletes, um, especially at their transition. So when they're in their senior year and they're about to transition out of, you know, their, their sport. like for me, the last game I had at university of Arkansas was the last game I played and that was it. And no one prepared me for, okay, well, what looks, what is, corporate life look like, or what does adulting life look like? And, you know, how can you use the skills that you have acquired from your sport and translate those into your corporate life? And mm-hmm. it works well as a high performer, right? But um, when you still have those fear of failures and you're very results driven and very, um, very particular about how you want to show up, that can create some, some, some hard, you know, hard times, you know, in the corporate arena. Um, cause I think us athletes are just so rooted in the identity of being an athlete. And so when that is gone, okay, well then who am I? So that's another mm-hmm. tool that we work, I work on, especially with the younger ones. Like, yes, you're an athlete, but you're also a daughter, a sister, a friend, an artist, a singer, whatever that looks like. There's so many layers to you, um, besides just your, your athletic prowess. And so mm-hmm. I work with competitive teams. I've worked with, I got a couple of kids that don't even play sports. They're just extremely high performers in the academic arena. They want to be, um, they want to get good test scores. They want to go to, you know, good school. Um, and then I have a couple of people that I'm working with that are not athletes at all. They are older and, but they're high performers. They, they have sales goals to hit. They have ones wanting to open a business and start a business. So um, it just depends on um, I'm trained to work with everybody, but my, my sweet spot is with the athletes. I love that you're offering this because you see all the time, the, the physical coach, the physical athletic coach, like you've got the batting coach and you've got the catching coach and the outfielder coach, or, I mean, there's so, spe- there's so much specific specificity to the positional type coaching and the athletic type coaching, but this is such a need. Absolutely. And I, and to your point, like I needed this, I needed this as an athlete and being a high competitor. And I mean, I was good. I went to a division one school for my athletics. Um, I still struggled. Right. And I still struggled with, you know, what are these, you know, we talk about mindset and I've heard coaches all my life say, you know, we've got to have a winning mindset or we've got to have a fierce mindset or a champion mindset. 
And I'm like, cool. What does that mean? And how do I right? obtain it? Right? Like, how do I obtain okay. this winning? How? I'm going to win. <laughs> cool. But if I also have this like little thought in the back of my head that says I'm not good enough, how successful am I going to be? And so um, for sure, I think, you know, I think we should be spending as much time on the mental game as we do the physical game. And oh, um, yes. because that's where it's, I mean, that's where it all starts, right? So. Absolutely. And I mean, where is the person who tells us like, and also you're going to lose and here's right. what that, here's what that's going to feel like. And also 100%. you're a singer and you're an artist and here's how you can translate those skills instead of experiencing a catastrophic loss at mm-hmm. age 22, when all of a sudden everything you've ever been is gone. Right. Uh, you know, you're all these things too. And Shana can help you navigate that change. Oh, absolutely. I love it. Yes, oh, I absolutely. love it. Yes. <laughs> so yep. yes. It's so good. It's so good. So take us through what it's like to be your client, like, okay. like from initial contact to the other side, like how does your process work? Sure. I love that question. So what typically happens is I meet with the parent first. So parents are the ones that usually mm-hmm. seek me out. Um, kids that you know, 12 to 18 really don't, I mean, they can say, ah, like I get in my head, but to really drill it down, they don't really have the words for that yet. And so start talking with the parent, Hey, this is sounds like something that your, um, your child would be interested in because I want them to be able to receive the coaching. If they're not going to receive the coaching and be willing to make the sustainable changes, then I don't want us to waste our time or money. Right. And so, um, So I will always start with the parents and then I'll have a chat with the athlete, just the athlete and I, Um, we spend about an hour chatting and talking about kind of some of their concerns, some of their areas of development, things they're really good at. Um, And then I will usually, once we've decided that, yes, we're going to work together, I can do either a three month or six month package. And the goal is like, I want to see you at least once a week for 60 minutes Um, The really cool thing about um, working with athletes or teens and young adults is that that 60 minutes, it's, I am focused completely on them. I don't have a phone. I've got a pen and paper. Um, And so I have found that even just in those first couple sessions, the connection of just the eye to eye, like I'm focused on you. I'm actively listening to you um, is powerful for them. I think they're so used to everybody around them multitasking and even having conversations, but also looking at their phone, like, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. And so, um, so we meet, um, we start with an assessment. I do, I am certified through the company or through the program that I worked, um, my certification through is that called Energy Leadership Index Assessment. And it really helps me gauge kind of the levels of energy that we are using on a particular day and what lens you are viewing the world from. So if you're viewing the the world from like a lower level of energy that's considered more catabolic and maybe more of like a like ego focus and as you like get up into the levels it's more focused on you know mastery and then you can get into the woo-woo levels it's like transcendence and so um one way i explain the levels of energy is level six is a synergy it's like a synthesis and you're in, in the flow when you are level six energy and that's athletes like when they are playing their sport they are in the flow, in the zone, time just seems to kind of melt away. And so we meet, um, once a week, three months, um, six months, we do the same. So either 10 to 18 sessions after we've done that assessment. And then I also offer group coaching. So I'll do group coaching with some athletes that, you know, want to get perspective from other athletes. Like, what's it like, you know, what's it feel like in this arena to, you know, Um, struggle with these limiting beliefs or, Hey, today we're going to talk about goal setting. And so having them bounce ideas off of each other um, is a really great way to also build community and help them see that they're not alone and feeling these things. Um, So that's, that's a big piece for me too. And I do team coaching as well. So I go in with the team, we meet, you know, once a week or once a month, depending on the needs of the team. And we break down all of these same things, limiting beliefs, reframing those, We work on time management, leadership, having emotional agility to have conversations with coaches and not get super like, you know, anxious. I know whenever I would start talking to my coach in college, (laughs) I just start crying. I'm like, why am I crying? I'm not, but I was just so like, oh, I have to talk to an adult about this. And so really kind of breaking those types of conversations down that not only are going to help you 
in your sport, but you're going to have to talk to a boss one day. You're going to have to talk to a professor one day, and you're going to have to have these tough conversations. So building that muscle now is so, you know, crucial for their development. A hundred percent. I, yeah, yeah that, that's so good. Um, <laughs> are you normally like, I don't know, there's so many things you could just say, um, are most of these happening in person or on zoom or whatever the need is. It's about half and half. I have some athletes that are all over the country right now, but I do have a few local, um, that I meet, um, here in the city. And so, uh, yeah, that mix is, you know, zoom or in person. I'll find that if I'm local, the kids want to meet in person, which I love, like I, it's, I love it so much. Um, but yeah, I've got a couple in New York and California and Michigan. So, um, we're zooming. So Nice. Yeah. yeah. I love that. One, another good thing that came from 2020, like almost everyone knows how to use this platform that 100%. you and I are currently using. Absolutely. Never thought of before. We can do business anywhere and help Absolutely. anyone. Absolutely. So uh, do you find that there is a lack of awareness of your service? Like everybody knows you can hire a batting coach, but how are we be bringing awareness to this coaching? And is it becoming more popular Love this. Yes. So there is, it's funny because once people, I say, oh, I'm a performance mindset coach, we're like, oh, okay. Like, what is that? And if I say life coach, they're like, oh, and I've heard of a life coach, still have really no idea what it is. Um, as you see in college, they have like sports psychology or sports therapy, which that that is an avenue. Um, but how coaching is different is that we tend to focus on here versus, you know, where you are today versus where you want to be and, you know, setting the groundwork for that path, whereas psychology and therapy tends to focus on mental illness, things that, you know, traumas that have happened in the past. Um, and so the awareness is that I, I do what I do is just me having to get out there and tell people, you know, meeting with teams, meeting with coaches, um, <clears throat> because I, what I think I do is such a valuable service and that if you, um, if you know me and you know what the kind of work I do, like, like let's work together. And so it's just me word of mouth getting out there. Um, I ran, a, I ran, run some free workshops. I'll actually be doing one in a couple of weeks. Um, so just to kind of get that, build that awareness of like, yeah, I'm, I'm a life coach for your kids, for your athletes. And um, and I've niched it down specifically so I can work with these athletes and that they know, um, like, this is my jam. This is where I want, this is the arena that I want to play in for sure. Yeah. It sounds like you probably function as counselor, part-time teacher, part-time parent, like lots of hats are going into this work. Um, are you working with a, a psychiatrist, psychologist sometimes when there is that need, like to partner together? Or do you there find have been that a, more... Yeah, no, there's been a couple of times where I've been able to work with um, a therapist that's also recommended me specifically for mindset coaching. Mm -hmm. um, so especially, you know, therapy is, you know, you know, having those types of um, connections has been very helpful um, because again, therapy is we're focusing on mental illness. We're focusing on things that have happened in the past trauma that you may have um, had as a child or as a teenager. And what I'm what I'm doing is taking you today. And if you've got some of these old belief systems from the past, we'll, we'll dig into them. But what we're taking is that belief or that thought pattern that you've had, and we're dismantling it and rebuilding an empowering, courageous thought pattern and belief system. Um, and so, you know, the therapy, it works so beautifully, I think, because you're working on like the past, how, how that belief system came to be. And then with me, we're working on dismantling it and living your best life. I mean, no offense to the therapists in the world, because I'm a product of about a decade of therapy, but yeah. <laughs> what you're doing really sounds like the actionable portions of my therapy. I mean, yeah, it's, it's what really the, is the catalyst to the change. Sure. You're right. And we have to be reminded it's a muscle, right? It is just like building a new habit. Like, yes, I know I've had the awareness that I've had this trauma and a belief system has you know, root taken place because of this trauma, but what do I want to do about it? Well, I want to practice something, you know, I want to, I want to practice a new story, this story, this old story doesn't serve me anymore. So how is this mm -hmm. new story going to serve me and make it, um, powerful and authentic? Yes, girl, get yes. your pen and write your story. Write yes, it yourself write, your story. Yes. write it. Yes. yes. I mm -hmm. love it. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. We need to like, we need to be together so we can high yes, five. Yeah. All <laughs> day. Yeah, all day. <laughs> Where'd I go? No, I love it. And I mean, I can only imagine the testimonial of the students that, you know, obviously this young underclassman is now a leader on her team, but what do the parents have to say? Well, the parent, I get a little weepy sometimes. I'm, I feel I, like I'm about to need a tissue. Because <laughs> I'm a parent. And so like, you know, I think, you know, it really does speak true. Like it does take a village to raise your babies. Right. And so, um, and I've already seen it now with my seven-year-old, like she doesn't, she thinks I'm embarrassing and doesn't listen to a word I say half the time. So like, perfect. you know, have, right. Perfect. You're on the right it's track. <laughs> yeah, we're on the right track. We're good. Um, but like having someone that is, helping you or helping your child, um, with whatever, where if that is confidence, motivation, um, that is for me, it's extremely tender. Like you are, you are allowing me into your child's space. Um, and you're giving me permission to have confidential conversations with your kids. And I don't take that lightly. I, I consider it an honor and a privilege. Um, but some of the things that parents have told me and one in particular, um, that every time I think about it, I get teary eyed is she texted me and she's like, um, so I just needed to thank you for giving me my girl back. And oh, like, and it was, you know, what's beautiful about it is that like, they have the tools I'm, you know, they have the tools. I'm just asking questions like, okay, well, let's look at this a little bit differently. Stop Amy. We're going to I know. I know. Um, For those of you um, who are just listening on Spotify, we're both falling. Okay. Yeah, we're, we just like, we're, we're both trying. Out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's what's so fun about this is that I get to serve this community and make an impact, but they already have all the answers. And I'm just asking the questions or I'm just helping them maybe see a different perspective in the work that we do. And so, yeah, I mean, I have that text saved. And I, you know, if I need it, I just, you know, I remember like, I know what this, I know what this young woman was when we got, when we started working together and I know what she is now. And, um, if, if I, I had to buy, or if I had to pay for a coaching service and that's what I texted, you know, the coach, like done, like I'm done, like, mm-hmm. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, I've seen kids go from, you know, wanting to quit, like wanting to completely quit their, um, sport to, um, being, you know, voted MVP on their team at the end of the season. And their parents have like, you know, uh, texted me and said, not only are, you know, do we, do we notice, but other people on the team notice and other parents have commented, her coach has commented, um, that her, her fire is back, her energy is up. And, um, so to receive that kind of feedback from the parents is, I mean, it just like, it fills me up. Like, it is just like, yes, so, yes. um, so yeah, like, so like, yeah, I parents, knew it. I yeah. knew it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, mm-hmm. I, I think we really, like, I don't know. I'm a parent of, of, of as well. And it, it does, we all have said, I mean, everybody says it takes a village. It takes a village, mm-hmm. but we're so prideful. We want to think we've got it all together. We want to yes. think our kid doesn't need an outside influence. We, but, but here for ourselves, we are hire a personal trainer, a CPA, a business and employment lawyer, a mindset coach. We have our mm-hmm. pastor. We have our girlfriends. We have so many coaches in our lives. And to mm-hmm. think that our child, like to bring awareness to the fact there are coaches for our children. There are people that, that can influence our children. Unlike the way we can, I know our adult children, I have told one of my adult children. Yes. I'm calling you out here right on the air. (laughs) Miss, you know who you are like 21 years old, still on our insurance. Doesn't know she needs renters tell her over and over. And it takes my outside insurance agent to call and go, you know what you need? And she's like, Oh yes. Okay. I need that. Right. So whether it's yes. insurance or life coaching or business coaching or sports yeah. coaching or mindset coaching, our children deserve this. Mm. You know, we, we cannot do it on our own. We don't mm-hmm. have the time. We don't have yeah. the knowledge or know the right questions to ask. So for someone like you to step in and give us our kid back. Yes. Oh my God. Mm. Yes. I can't. Uh, I <laughs> so good. Ah. So I know. It's, oh. tell me this struggle. So I've, I've heard so many friends and, um, my boys, uh, are, have not, ex- well, maybe they have experienced a little bit in little league, but when you get to the higher levels, like, well, I say higher, like high school, you know, five, a six, a high schools, big high schools, our high schools care about their sports. So sure. what, what about when you're not, the biggest, strongest, fastest kid on the team and they stay on the team and they become 
so increasingly frustrated because maybe the guy, you know, the coach's kid is the, the number one guy, or he's not in the in crowd, or he doesn't have the right curly mullet to play baseball. I don't know, whatever it is, (laughs) like how have you had to navigate this before? Absolutely. Because I think that again, Mm -hmm. we're so it's, there's the identity piece that we are rooted in, like as athletes, this is our core. So if I'm not playing the sport, who am I, what am I doing? So we definitely break down um, our identity in that time. Like, if you're not going to be the star player, that's fine. Like the, everything that we're working on is not only going to help you like understand and get clear about your role on the team, but that's also going to help you incorporate when you are not the vice president, you, how the role that I'm playing right now, how can I play it to the very best of my ability? And so we work on, that's where the big mindset shift comes in. And like, as, as young people and athletes, a lot of times we're comparing ourselves to other people. We're comparing ourselves to, um, you know, great players, like why I'm never going to be as good as so-and-so. So what's Mm -hmm. the, you know, what's the rub? Why do I try? Um, but mm-hmm. you still can be the best you, you can possibly be on that, on that court in that field. And if you're busting your butt and you are focused on your improving and like your areas of development, you're going to see some more runtime. Like you're going to, you're going to push people out of their comfort zone. May, they may be the star player, but they're not working nearly as hard as you. And these mm-hmm. coaches want heart. They want like people that are Um, coachable and are able to receive feedback. So if the star player is, yeah, you're good athletically and physically, but you really, you know, if they make one wrong move, they are in their head for the rest of the game. You want, you need someone that's going to come in and be like, I'm completely focused on what's going on. I know my role. I know how to achieve results that I want to achieve. And this is what I'm going to do. And so it's really Mm -hmm. about mastery in your own, like in having agency, of what you can do, what you are, the possibility of you showing up the best way that you can show up. And so that's a big piece that we work on. It's the identity and really getting clear about your role and mastering your craft. Mm, That's so good because yeah, yeah, like you said, that star player, if they're in their head and you're this value driven player who is adding the value in their position every single time, and you've got that clear head, it's time to go. Shanna done told me, put me in coach. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm, like it's my ready. time. Yeah. <laughs> and you're, then you're way less likely to be in your head, right? When you are so focused on like, I have minimized the fear of failure. Perfection is not a thing. Like when we break down the fear of, you know, perfectionism, like if we were perfect all of the time, that would be our baseline. Mm-hmm. And so if we're perfect all the time, and that's our baseline then you're really setting yourself up for that, you know, that failure. And so it's, Mm -hmm. it's not achievable. You can play a perfect game for you. Mm -hmm. Right. And it can be, you have showed up, you've showed out, you've played your heart out, you've had fun and you've been completely focused on the task at hand in that moment. And Mm -hmm. like, what are we, you know, I think as high performers and athletes, a lot of times we'll do 30 things, right. And the two things we did wrong, that's what we're going to focus on. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a shift. That's a perspective shift. Like, no, look at all the things that you accomplished in this, Mm -hmm. you know, game today. You did A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And those two things, cool. Areas of development. We'll work on them in practice or we'll work on them in our session. Mm -hmm. Opportunity for improvement. Absolutely. Areas of opportunity. That's what we call it. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. I mean, wasn't that the whole Magic Johnson's like shtick? He's like, okay, I can't make the basket. So I'm going to be the rebounder. Yes. Yeah. And that was kind of like, um, you know, Michael jo- yeah, Michael Jordan talks about that, how he failed over and over and over and over again. And that's why he is who he is because he, he wasn't, um, he wasn't afraid of failure. It was like, failure is going to happen, especially in a sport where there is a win and a loss category, like there's going to be failure. So let's get real clear about what failure looks like for us and define what that failure looks like for us. And then we can move forward because when you mm-hmm. break it down in your head, it's like, you're worried about not making a shot. Like no one makes a hundred percent of their shots. So like, you know, let's, you know, break that down even further. So, and then what are you going to have to do in order to improve that area? Is that, are we going to need to be in the gym 30 minutes before practice? Do you want to be in there 30 minutes after? Do you want to do some visualization exercises before you start a game? Do you want to work on meditation so you can clear your mind and get centered before, you know, practicing competition? We work on all of that. 
Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, in my own meditation, my husband was literally comparing it to basketball, which I know almost nothing about, <laughs> but he's like, you know, when you are, when you become so present in the moment, if you're the point guard and someone checks you and you're not present, you're off your game. But if yep. you have meditated, you understand you get knocked your focus never moves. So the yep. formation stays in place. Absolutely. I get yes. it now. I love it. Him and you together. And yeah. Yes. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yes. I, me too. Mm. Oh my God. I didn't think I could get excited about basketball. Let's get, let's get. <laughs> I love Check. it. Yeah. That's next? it. Check. What's next? <laughs> so, all right. So you're obviously making enormous impacts in the lives of children, athletes, teams, parents, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is the one that makes me the most excited mm -hmm. for the kid. Um, but you, you say you have some nonprofit aspirations. Yes. Tell me what that may look like in your future. So my pie in the sky is to start a foundation and it would be a coaching foundation that, um, provides coaching services to athletes and high performers that otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity to, for coaching. Um, and so that is, that's 2023 is my goal to have that started. And um, so that way, yeah, because I believe that everybody should have a coach and or a, a counselor. Um, I feel like talk, you know, talking, just if you can get things out and onto paper or just out of your brain have, I mean, studies upon studies have proven how helpful and beneficial that can be. And so even, even talking, um, you know, right now I'm working with you know, AU teams or club teams that have a, you know, home gym. Um, I want to be able to bring that to, I want to be able to bring coaching to everyone and make that available for, um, you know, kids that can certainly afford it now, but kids that may not be able to afford it, but also need these tools and concepts to just help them um, live on purpose and live authentically. <clears throat> mm, mm. I, oh man, my idea, my brain just goes, crazy with ideas. I love yes. it. Mm, yes. I love that. That's so awesome. What yeah. a need. How much more success could these kids have if they had that resource, you know, and to develop those natural talents and give them a hand up. That's what I tell my kid. That's what I tell my athletes right now. I'm like, um, and you know, I try not to nerd out too much on the brain science, but then, you know, neurology or the neuroscience shows that like our thought patterns are legit brute, like grooved into our brain. So when we build a thought pattern, it is grooved into our brain. Um, most people's prefrontal cortex or their brain isn't fully formed until they're 25, 26. So like the kids that I'm working with, their brains are still so malleable and you can, you can start building these pathways quicker and faster. And then by the time that they are 25, 26, that pathway is like a six lane super highway. Mm. So if it's an empowering thought pattern, that's already like, you're going to default to it since you're going to be unstoppable in your twenties yes. and thirties. And so that's yes. what I love about it is like, you, you do this work now and you, it's a sustainable change for you. The sky's the limit. You've gone into like a growth mindset and you believe things that are possible that other people just would not even take action on. God, I wish there'd been something like this when I was young <laughs> or that too. I'd known about coaching at all. I mean, yes. maybe, listen, we are 40 year old women sitting mm -hmm. here. Hear me now and believe me later, our listeners, Shanna is not coaching student athletes. Shanna is shaping tomorrow's leaders. Mm. Like she is, she is shaping our future. Mm. Girl, you made me cry. Quit. <laughs> this is so good. I just can't stand it. Like every student needs this athlete or not. Like let's yes. get them in your program. <laughs> yeah. Bring them over. I love That's them. Yes. It. Bring them yep. over. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I, I don't want to keep you too long. We are running short on time. So Shanna, tell us where our listeners, your listeners can find you. Okay. Awesome. So I have a website. It's www.35, the numbers three and five coaching.com. I'm also on Instagram at, at 35 coaching Inc. And then Facebook is at 35 coaching Inc as well. All right. You heard it here. 35 coaching. Why the, what's the 35? Um, well, it's my basketball number. It was, oh, it was my yeah. Jersey. Yeah. It was my Jersey number from high school through college. And oh. I thought it was kind of ironic whenever I decided to, um, I fought working with athletes. I was terrified at first. And then I, and then it was just like, I kind of had that mindset shift of like, that's exactly where I need to be. And so the irony for me was 
you know, our identities are so rooted in, in this sport or this, you know, being athletic, um, that especially with athletes that pick a number, almost always when they pick a number, there's significance behind the numbers, there's meaning behind the numbers. And so for me, three and five have very special meaning to me. And, um, I also know that I'm so many other things other than a former athlete. And so the irony for me was like, I'm going to name my, my business after my Jersey number. So yes, 35 coaching, I love it. 35 yeah. coaching, 35 coaching.com at 35 yeah. coaching on Insta and Facebook. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us today, Shanna. Thanks if so you much. have a student athlete, if you have a student, if you are between the ages of 12 and 22, and you want to be coached to become tomorrow's leader, get with Shanna Pearson here in Oklahoma city. She can work with you nationwide. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you Thank so you, much, Amy. Shanna. Thank it's you. Been a pleasure. Yeah, all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>